Hi, everybody. My name is Paul Girard. I'm a student loan consultant, and I'm very pleased to be working with the American Dental Education Association, ADEA, to provide you with some information designed to help you do a better job of managing your student loans. This short module is going to walk you through some simple steps that are going to help you determine the most effective repayment strategy as you graduate from dental school. As we go through this module, there's some things to remember. First of all, there is never a penalty for early repayment or aggressive repayment on your student loans. And in general, you can switch repayment plans. Also, if you decide to be aggressive at some point in repayment, voluntary payments, for example, a payment during a grace period when they're not required, and also additional payments, payments that are made over and above the minimum payment requirement those can usually be targeted on your most expensive loan, for example, the Direct Plus loan. So work very carefully with your loan servicer on anything regarding repayment, especially aggressive repayment on your student loans. Now, we follow three very simple steps to determining an effective repayment strategy as you graduate from dental school and move into repayment. First of all, be sure you know what you've borrowed, what kind of loans you have in your student loan portfolio. Know who services the loans, who are you going to be working with in repayment, and be sure you know when they come due. It's usually about six months after you graduate. Number two, identify and very important to constantly review your repayment objectives, which we'll look at briefly here in just a moment. And then once you know what you've borrowed, who you're working with in terms of who your loan servicer is and when your loans come due, and you have a pretty good idea about how you want to go about repayment, then simply choose a repayment plan to help you meet your repayment objectives. Now, step number one, determine what is in your student loan portfolio. Your federal loans, such as the direct unsubsidized and direct plus loan, also called grad plus, you can find those listed at the National Student Loan Data System site, nslds.ed.gov. You'll also find information on your loan servicers there, and you're likely to find that all of your federally owned loans, such as all your direct loans, will be serviced by one loan servicer. Some of you may have campus-based loans. We'll look at those in detail in just a moment on the next slide. If you have campus-based loans, you're likely to have a different loan servicer than the servicer for your direct loans. If you are not sure if you have additional loans, but you think you might, your credit report should list all of your student loans, including private loans, because those are not listed on the federal NSLDS site. And the financial aid office at the school you attended where you think you might have borrowed additional loans should also have a record of those. So the NSLDS.ed.gov site is a great place to start in determining what's in your student loan portfolio. Now you're looking at a sample loan portfolio for upcoming graduates of dental school. And in fact, this is very similar to your colleagues who've graduated before you. We've highlighted direct unsubsidized and direct plus loans because for many of you, those two loans comprise the bulk of, if not all of your student loan portfolio. Your direct unsubsidized loan has a six month grace period. It will be coming due about six months after you graduate and it has a fixed interest rate. With the Direct Plus loan, you also have a six-month window period. It's not really called a grace period. It's called a six-month post-enrollment deferment, and it will also be coming due about six months after you graduate, and it also has a fixed rate. So once again, if your portfolio is mainly or comprised solely of Direct Unsubsidized and Direct Plus loans, they should be coming due in November or December of your graduation year, assuming your graduation is in May or June. Campus-based loans, these include federal Perkins loans, the Health Profession Student Loan Program, and loans for disadvantaged students. And those loans came directly from your school, although they are federal. Your school serves as the lender for those loans. The terms and conditions vary by your loan program, and your financial aid office can provide you with details on the terms and conditions of those loans. If you have any private loans, same thing. The terms and conditions vary by the lender. You can check the disclosure statement for your private loans 
to get the particulars of any private loans you may have. Now, once you know in step number one what you borrowed, who you're working with, who your loan servicer is in repayment, and when your loans come due, the second step is to determine your repayment objectives. And there's no right or wrong answer to what are your repayment objectives. They vary by individual, but we're showing you a number that are fairly common among dental school graduates. You may be in a position where you want to aggressively pay off your loans in order to reduce the impact of interest accrual, all the interest that builds up, and capitalization where that interest is added back to the original principal that you borrowed. Others of you may want to be cautious as you graduate from dental school, especially if you're in a residency program, and you may need to protect your income and maximize your cash flow. So that's another repayment objective, especially for postdoctoral students who are doing residency programs after dental school. You may have as a repayment objective loan forgiveness, perhaps through the public service loan forgiveness program, or you may also have as a repayment objective getting help with your student loans in exchange for service. For example, a program such as the National Health Service Corps, the Indian Health Service, the Armed Forces, or the National Institutes of Health. Also, there's some state programs that provide financial support in exchange for your commitment to work in the state. So a number of different repayment objectives, and these can change during the course of repayment. You may start off wanting to be very cautious in repayment, and then once you get your feet on the ground and perhaps get established in your practice, you may want to start aggressively paying down your student loans. Now, the third step is simply to pick a repayment plan that works for you and that will help you meet your repayment objectives that we identified in step two. The first plan is a standard 10-year plan. This is the most aggressive plan available on federal loans. 120 level payments, the payments never change, and the debt is paid off in 10 years. There's another version of a 10-year plan called a graduated or step plan, and this is where the payments start lower and they increase in designated amounts at designated intervals, usually 24 months. Once again, it's a 10-year plan, but it's really designed for borrowers who could otherwise afford a standard 10-year plan, but who need some cash flow relief the first few years. There's also an extended 25-year plan, 300 level payments, the payments never change. Clearly the advantage to an extended plan is lowering your monthly payments. The downside is obviously that you would pay much more in interest over the course of the repayment term. But once again, remember, you can always overpay with no penalty. And some of your colleagues will enter into an extended 25-year plan and aggressively pay to shorten the 25 year period. But they do that just to get a more manageable required payment. By the way, the first three plans, standard, graduated, and extended, the calculation of those payments has absolutely nothing to do with income, family size, how you file your taxes, and marital status. The other category of repayment plans are called income-driven repayment plans, and this is where the payments are tied each year to income and family size. And a reminder, there is a separate repayment module we would strongly encourage you to watch on income-driven repayment plans. So these are the repayment plans for federal loans such as direct unsubsidized and direct plus. So in summary, as you graduate from dental school and you're trying to figure out the best repayment strategy for your student loans, you really can't do that until you actually know what you've borrowed, who your loan servicer is, in other words, who you're going to be working with. These are organizations like Fed Loan Servicing, Great Lakes, Naviant, Nelnet. There are some others, but those are the big four, the ones who have the majority of the direct loans. So you can't really figure out a repayment strategy until you know what you've borrowed, who's got the loans, and when they're coming due. And then we'd encourage you, as we said, reevaluate your repayment objectives every single year. And as needed, once you get into a repayment plan, remember you can always overpay with no penalty, but you can also switch repayment plans if needed. Work very closely with your loan servicer in that regard. The AAMC ADEA Dental Loan Organizer and Calculator can really help you with the numbers associated 
with each of these plans. And you can find that calculator at aamc.org slash go dental. We hope the information in this module will help you as you craft together a repayment strategy as you graduate from dental school and a reminder that there are four other repayment modules we'd encourage you to take a look at. There's one on the income driven repayment plans. There's one on public service loan forgiveness. There is one on federal consolidation and there is one on student loan refinancing, how to take all your student loans and refinance those. Best wishes from Adia, and once again, thank you for your participation in this module.